All right. Good evening, everyone. This is your RC literature test two. So let's have a look at the passage. Now, the passage reads, two major problems face creators of graphic histories. Uh, what are these two problems? Let's look at them. The first is how to make visual representation equal to the history. The images and the words together must be greater than some of their parts. That means just the images or just the words should be less than what they both represent together. Okay. Where, uh, verisimilitude is also essential. Now, I understand that this is a very big word. So, let's just keep this aside for a minute and try to understand what do we know from here. Okay. We know about very, the root very, which talks about truth. Right. So, verisimilitude will be the quality or the appearance of something being true. Okay. So, verisimilitude is also essential. That means truth about that historical fact is also extremely essential. The narrative and image uh, centered medium includes the creator to specul uh, speculate, speculate is to guess, to fill in, and to introduce both fictional text and uh, visuals of uh, uncertain veracity. Now, what is veracity over here? Again, we can see this from the root and we can understand that here veracity means accuracy. Okay. All right. So a comic can be beautiful, but of dubious history. What is dubious? Dubious, we can try and understand over here as not to be trusted. Okay. Dubious history or a solid history, but aesthetically lacking. Aesthetically is beauty, the component of beauty. So what does he mean by the first paragraph that a comic might, might be very beautiful, but it might lack in the actual history or it might represent the actual history, but it might not be very, very uh, beautiful to look at. Okay. The best historical comics find ways to address these challenges and utilize the medium to its best advantage. That means good a comic would find the, the solution to both these problems. And now we go for examples. There are three particular examples about three different books that are given in this uh, passage that we can look at. Ari Kelment and John Thur uh, Freta, Freta Worms Battle Lines, a graphic history of the uh, Civil War 2015 is a good example. A study of transformative quality of violence, the book unfolds from a series of historical artifacts, objects, photographs and documents interposed. What is interposed? Intervening amongst parties. So maybe, you know, each of these are uh, 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 somehow being a part of the other. Okay, the objects are being a part of the photograph and photographs are being part of the documents and so on and all. Okay, with comic style co representation of their origin or the experience that they represent. So these objects, photographs, documents, or all of these are represented in a comic style so that uh, we can experience what they actually represent. Much of the dialogue that Kelman and Feta Warm created is between fictional characters. So they used fictional characters. They did not uh, use real characters for... That means because they did not want to invent conversations of real historical actors. So they did not want to create any new conversations that did not happen or might not be actually true. Okay, Kelman explains that in a book or the, about the impact of violence, they wanted to avoid doing violence to the past. That means they did not want to drastically change the past. That, that's what they are talking about over here. Right? Next. Uh... Marek Bennett's The Civil War Diary of Freeman Colby faced a similar problem. The diary of this New Hampshire teacher gave Bennett rich material for a graphic history. That means uh, this guy, Freeman Colby, this guy's diary, where is my pen? Yeah, okay. So this guy, Freeman Colby's diary, gave Mark Bennett a lot of material for a graphic history. But we don't know how exactly Freeman looks or what he is like. So, Bennett cannot use what he is or who he is or his pictures. So, instead, Bennett uses stick figures with generic faces. Generic faces means common faces to portray that person's story. Okay. Michael G. Van and Liz Chake, uh, Clark's The Great Hanoi Rat Hunt, Empire Disease and Modernity in French Colonial Vietnam is a graphic history that exemplifies the possibilities of using art and text together to ask historical questions. So, this, okay brings or this comes out as an example a good book to show how art and text can go together now what does this book do the book engages the segregation of segregation means separation of colonial hanai and its connection to the wider world 
and the design of each page reinforces these themes okay so basically all the pages somehow bring that art or visual experience that you know colonial hanoi has been segregated has been separated gutters cut through the middle of some pages so basically some pages have a, a, a demarcation like a gutter okay in the form of a gutter so they put a picture of the gutter dividing vietnamese and french characters whose speech balloons are drawn in different colors what's a speech balloon so let us think that this guy is a person okay so this is his speech balloon so if he's saying hi right and this guy is a french guy maybe i'll mark this balloon in red instead if this guy is a vietnamese person okay i'll mark this entire balloon in blue so this way there's a clear demarcation that can be seen okay these people are french people these people are vietnamese people that's the kind of uh, thing that uh, the who who's brought in um yeah michael g van and uh, liz clark have brought in in their great hanoi rat hunt empire disease and modern teen french colonial vietnam okay on other pages chains or ropes represent visual metaphors so visual metaphors are what these are uh, just showing that this particular thing looks like this for us okay it's a comparison that's been created connecting individuals and street level views of the city to the regional and global maps okay all right so he's told us about the examples right so what can i understand i can understand from para let me just erase the uh, you know ink from these slides so that i can uh, you know talk about the structure a bit better so from this particular paragraph we understand about the challenges faced by comics okay to illustrate graphic history maybe i can understand it this way correct what about from here i can see that these are nothing but examples presented about different books yeah can i can i understand this particular paragraph like this now let's look at what this paragraph has to say comics can make great history books they can convey the meaning of the past to the present as effectively as a good textbook or the most detailed monograph excuse me of course compared with textbooks graphic histories have always been a more democratic and multiform genre okay so can i say that graphic histories are better than textbooks in conveying history okay these are better than textbooks to convey history right okay the comic book can bring both knowledge and joy to many creators of graphic histories can facilitate this experience by taking seriously both the medium and the discipline medium means the aesthetic and visual parts how you are representing and discipline is the history okay and by studying and applying the opportunities languages and limitations of comics and history together okay readers can help by demanding graphic history so this is what the readers can do that engage the senses and intellects as both scholarship and art okay so here we also see responsibility of comics and readers okay so this is how the entire structure of our passage is being divided now let's quickly look at the first question the first question says in the book just give me one moment let me take my video off of this side yes in the book battle lines a graphic history of civil war 2015 most dialogues were written between fictional characters too okay so i can clearly say that this part is a specific detail type question right so clearly this is derived from these lines i think uh, you know i can talk about this being a part of only this particular paragraph yes so reading this would be able to answer the question so now let's look at what are the options that are given indicate that much of the interaction between real historical figures was fraught with violence actually let's see what is there in this passage in this passage they're saying that most dialogues were invented why because they did not want to you know put real conversation or or conversations invented conversations between real actors correct so here he saying the interaction was between real historical characters and this was with violence so this is a wrong answer what kind of answer is this this is inconsistent what about b show that in a book about uh, violence creating fictional dialogues for uh, you know 
real characters is fraught with danger again they have created fictional uh, dialogues for real characters okay but they've not put real characters in there they've put fictional characters over there they took the same name but they put a stick figure or something and they went ahead with it so again this also is an inconsistent answer okay what about here create an artistic distance between what is real and what is fictional okay now this seems all right but this becomes a partial scope choice okay because this artistic distance between what is real and what's fictional has not been established they've only told that they didn't want to invent a new conversation because that would demean the history over there correct which we can very clearly see from option d so our answer should be an uh, option d are we clear okay